As of 2010, there were over 310 million people in the United States. A diverse population with varying interests, Americans enjoy eating out, going to concerts, watching movies, hanging out at the mall, and dying. In 2009, there were 15,241 murders in the United States, which boils down to about five people killed per every 100,000. While we don't have the highest murder rate in the world, that honor goes to Turkey, 15,000 is a lot of people. Certainly, murders are given a bulk of the attention on television news programs. How many times have you heard something like, four children found dead in a local apartment, news at 11? Or, a man douses his ex-wife with gasoline and sets her on fire, details at 10. So what causes all of these deaths? Alcohol and drugs fuel some murderers, as does revenge and crimes of passion. Then there's just plain lunacy, people snapping and taking lives. But nobody in the murder business garners more attention than the serial killer. Hollywood delights in embellishing upon and exaggerating the myth of the serial killer. Hannibal Lecter, Patrick Bateman, Sweeney Todd, Michael Myers, Jean-Baptiste Grenouille, Jason Voorhees, Norman Bates, all make for dynamic and sometimes dashing villains. In reality, they're that guy you see in your neighborhood every day, getting the mail, walking the dog, mowing the lawn, the one who turns and waves and gives you a small, seemingly harmless, little smile. Serial murder is defined as two or more murders by a single person in separate events. It differs from mass murder in the sense that mass murder usually occurs a single time, with multiple victims perishing all at once. Serial killers also operate alone, whereas mass murder is a collaborative effort. Serial killers strike and kill, and then engage in a time off between murders, referred to as an emotional cooling off period. Serial killers come from all races, are usually males in their 20s and 30s, possibly suffered some kind of childhood trauma, drink heavily, can suffer from depression, can be psychotic, are seen as average people, seek to control their victims, are fascinated with police and police procedure, may have served in the military. While many serial killers grow up in abusive households, that doesn't seem to be the deciding factor in their behavior. Some, such as Jeffrey Dahmer, grew up in modest suburban surroundings. Though his mother and father didn't have the most loving relationship, Jeffrey never lacked the necessities in life, and he was not physically or mentally abused. However, as children, some serial killers may start fires just to see something destroyed, and they hold an unusual interest in biology. Some start their murderous careers by abusing animals. When the abuse alone is no longer enough, the future killer may move up to killing the animals, then dissecting them. Dr. Albert Schweitzer, a well-known humanitarian, once said that anyone who has accustomed himself to regard the life of any living creature as worthless is in danger of arriving also at the idea of worthless human lives. Robert Ressler, who developed profiles of serial killers for the FBI, agrees, saying, Murderers very often start out by killing and torturing animals as kids. Homer Simpson once said that beer was the cause of and solution to all of life's problems. While the former might be true in the case of the serial killer, the latter couldn't be further from the truth. Alcohol weakens brain mechanisms that normally restrain impulsive behaviors, including inappropriate aggression. In other words, if a serial killer, who already harbors desires to act out on his impulsive aggressiveness while sober, drinks alcohol, he is much less able to control his violent impulses and will give in to the temptation to kill. The question, however, isn't of the effects of alcohol upon the brain, but why and whether or not a serial murderer may drink in the first place. Multiple sources describe the serial murderer as someone who seeks control, control over his impulses, control over an abusive family member, control over the depression, loneliness, and isolation one feels from perceptions of being different from others, all of which cause low self-esteem. Drinking provides the serial killer with the kind of control he so desires. However, it's fleeting, this feeling, 
and when the drug no longer provides a balm to all of the murderous impulses roiling around in their brains. As their tolerance increases, and the drug no longer provides the sense of serenity and calm for which they used it in the first place, they will commit murder to regain that feeling of control. And it works, at least for a little while, until depression and low self-esteem return. Thank you.